Welcome to my channel called Arco Bloom Boutique. So in this video today, we're going to be talking about samples. I know that um, a lot of ladies that are starting out doing embroidery for their business, like they don't have um, an idea of like what we use to do samples. I mean, when I started out, I, I didn't know, like I was following um, all the other YouTubers that were doing embroidery. And a lot of people suggested this um, knit you get from Joanne. So this one is called Knit Interlock, if you're looking at Joanne. So they have a different color. So I try to get pink. I think you should get the gray one too because I have gray shirt, white shirt, pink shirt, and black shirt. But then um, if you can get felt, I also have felt. Um, this is from Amazon and they're cheaper than this fabric. So I didn't get black because I'm going to use, I don't have a lot of uh, design that are on a black shirt. So I'm just going to use the felt to do blacks. And then this one's pink and then white. So I cut, a lot of people always have questions about how why you should cut yours. Um, it's up to you and how you store them. But for me, I cut it 12 by 12. The reason is, this is how I store them. Store them in an Ikea um, bin like this. And I use these sleeves. So the reason I do this is, if you have a tons of design, you might forget um, what fabric and threads you use. So I have a reference like this so I can refer back. And I also found a system where I, like, you know how I, I can input like all my fabric. So this is how I store my applique fabric on like comic books board. I found an app. Um, where I, I can just tip photo of my fabric and how much I have and then it will give me warning like when I'm really low on this fabric so then I'll know that okay this this particular design that uses this fabric right here um, that I only have like a half yard left and so I can only like do probably like two or three more design then I have to take the listing out because I don't have that fabric anymore and then I have to buy new fabric to do a different color scheme. The reason I do that is because customer, when you take a photo of this on Etsy, um, when they buy it, they expect the same color. And so you want to uh, do the same because I just saw um, some bad reviews from some other shop that the customer um, buy the design because they want exactly like the picture, but they receive like a different fabric on the applique. So yeah, I think that could result in disappointment on the customer side. So I'm trying to keep track of all that. I don't know how that's gonna go, but hopefully it'll work out. Yeah, so this is how I store them. And then so that's how we do the sample. So that's why I cut mine to 12 by 12. And I just prepare a bunch of them like this. You guys see this? So when I need to do a sample, I just grab one. And then um, I usually use poly mesh to do my uh, real order. But for sample, um, you can use tear away, but I try to just use up my, I have a bunch of these cutaway. So I decided to use just a cutaway. You should still hoop them like how you would do an actual shirt. But since I really, uh, I don't want to waste a lot of my poly mesh. So I use this uh, cutaway and cutaway is really stable. So you won't get um, puckers on your design. So what I do is I print out my design and then I go and select my fabric. So these one are sketch design. They don't have, um, if you guys can see that, they don't have 
uh, applique. They're just thread. So for this pineapple, I'm going to use like this green. This one only had two color, which is green and yellow. I'm going to use this lime green and then this bright yellow because it's the pineapple design. So I'm going to be doing a bunch of fruit because it's almost summer and hopefully it will give um, customer into the vibe of summer and they will buy this design. So I'm going to be using these two color, just yellow and green. And that's how I um, select, that's how I do my design and print out so I can see them. And then what I also do is I write down the color. So the color of this is 1683 for yellow. So I write down my color because when customer order this design off of my Etsy, I know exactly what color I'm going to get because there's a lot of different yellow and I don't want, I don't want to get the wrong yellow. So I write it down. So 1683 for yellow. And then for the green one is 1701. So for the name font, I don't give customer option for this. So just they're just going to get the same exact design with the same font when they order uh, this pineapple design. Um, some design, I let them customize the font they can choose. But some I don't because it's easier that way. And when they buy it, they just buy it. They don't have to uh, message me. Like if they really like the design, how it's already put together, they just buy it. So that's easier on my end. Um, there's some that I have fonts and like I have to go back and forth with a customer of doing fonts. Sometimes like they don't want anything on the chart and then they'll ask for another different font. But if I don't, if I can't find it or I don't have it, then um, I just tell customer that. So, that's how I um, do my sample. And then for applique, so I have this uh, strawberry. I think right now I see, I've been seeing a lot of strawberry going on. So strawberry design. Um, this one has applique. So what I do, I just go in my stash and I know the strawberry is red. So I choose this red. I don't want like a solid, solid red because I want to have some texture. So. I have this red one that has some texture on it. Some kind of like hatch mark or something. Crops. Yeah, hatch or whatever pattern on it. And then this uh, stripe green one. So I'm going to be using this for like the leaf and then the banner. Yeah, and the thread for this is just black and the green, this lime green and this red one. So. These are easy design because they only have like three threads or like two or, two or three um, fabric applique. Yeah, so today we're just going to be learning. Um, we just learned how to uh, do sample like for me explaining. I mean, you guys probably see a lot of my live and a lot of video about how to make sample. But then today I'm merely just going to be talking about the stuff that you can find or use for sample. And then after this, um, when I finish the sample, I'm not going to film the process of me doing it because I have some video on it. So when I finish all of them, I will show you guys how I photograph them and the props that I choose. Um, sometimes I don't really like, I might not have prop for every single design, but the main thing I use is just like the bee garlands. If I don't have a bee garland to match the thing, then I just take a photo as is. But you guys will see that process and how I set up. Um, yeah, so that's all for um, preparing for sample, you guys. Hey everybody! So today I'm just going to show you guys my photography area and how I'm going to take my photo. I'm using my um, iPhone to take all my photos, but today I'm going to do a comparison between my iPhone and my DSLR Canyon T3i to see if there's a difference, and also with my light ring too. I have these two uh, studio light, and I have a big backdrop because I do tutu, and 
I need to fit like the whole like outfit. So if you're only doing shirts, then you can get like that light box that um, some other Etsy shop use. And this is all my props. Um, I display them on this wall because I have a slat wall over here. So yeah, so this is my photography era. And then I will show you guys um, how I take it. I'm gonna go get my ring light and set that up too. But because I find that if I don't have the ring light on top, um, some of the image is a little bit dark, so I have to get my ring light. So I will be um, setting that up right now and then show you guys. Hey ladies and gentlemen, um, in this video I didn't do a voice recording, so I'm doing a voice over for you guys. So right here you guys can see that I'm folding the sample to make it look like it's a folded shirt. And that's how we take photo for um, our embroidered sample. And then you can see that I have two studio lights on the side and then on top is my ring light. And sorry, I didn't have like any bad weight. So I'm just using like um, a bag that I have from my can. But just put some stuff in there to make it heavy because the ring light is pretty heavy, so it keep on topping over. So I just tie it down with like the IKEA bag here, so you, it look kind of messy. And then I kind of like tilt my sample to the side because I don't like it to make it like straight. And yeah, so I like to tilt it like just slightly to the left. And then I got this bee garland from Hobby Lobby to stylize the sample. So I um, I went with this 4th of July colored garland because the theme is patriotic. So you guys can see that I did a bunch of patriotic um, sample like last week. I'm just like have the time this week to take photo of them and trying to upload them to my Etsy later. And then I also add like glasses to a, a to accessorize it but then it was having some glare from the ring light so I decided that I don't need that I'm just gonna keep it simple with the bee garland so later I took it out and yeah just omitted that glasses and you guys will see that I'm using my iPhone to take photo um, I test out my iPhone I always been using my iPhone but then I test out my DSLR and I'm not gonna edit anything and show you guys um, the two photos, I didn't see much difference in them with the iPhone DSR. I think it's with the editing, probably make a difference. But that will be part two of this tutorial. I will show you guys how I edit it in Photoshop and how to put my like logo on it. So I'll show you guys that. So here I'm doing like a overhead shot and then I try to do like two side shots and a video. Um, I think doing video and just trying to add as much photo as you can will, you know, let the customers really see how, how the sample look like. I just don't want to do like one photo because I've been seeing some other shop like only have one photo and sometimes I like to see more of how it looked like from different angle shots so I'm adding like two side shots and an overhead shot and the video just to show customer like how it will look because they don't see the product so they rely on you to um, you know do a good job of photographing it so they'll get to sense like how it will look like in person you know so that's just how I take photo of you guys and then um, the in the next clip you guys will see me um, uh, style, style a um, the next sample, which is like the watermelon. Um, you guys can basically use anything for your sample, like as prop, but just don't add too much because I know that it, it could be like too distracting. So, and. This sample, I didn't have anything that go with the watermelon theme, so I just 
going to add ribbon. You, like I said earlier, you guys can use anything. So I'm just using ribbon and I'm, I'm trying to curl it because I just don't want to throw it on there. So I try to curl it to make it look nice. So I'm using the red polka doll and then I'm going to be adding the green one just to accent because the the um, wall of milling has like the green skin on the bottom. So yeah, and then I also just used my phone to do photos again. So anyway, that's just how I do photo. And so you guys enjoy the rest of the um, video. And I also did like a little clip of me going to Hobby Lobby to pick up some props. Um, like you guys can basically use whatever you guys want as prop or just leave it as is. It's totally fine. It just, you just need to have good lighting and a uh, iPhone or a camera to take the photo. So you guys don't even have to use prop to if you guys don't want to. I just like to use it just to make my stuff stand out a little bit or like just look a little bit different from other Etsy shop. So yeah, anyways, enjoy the video, you guys. Take care.